So to start off, you have to open Roblox Studio and make sure that you go into the base plate. You can remove this, you won't be needing that. And then you're going to need the plugin called Loading Character. It's going to be pretty easy to find. Uh, I'll link it down below uh, from where to find it. So let's say um, you have a Roblox character that you want to add to the GFX. You will easily just put in, let's say, my username or your username is fine. So this is my username. So what you're going to do next is pretty simple. You're going to right click and you're going to go all the way down to export selection. This will basically take the texture from the model and save it to your files. So you're going to go into a blender folder of your choice. You can make it on your PC and then you go to, I'm just going to go here. And then I usually make a new folder for each Roblox character. This is my folder. You can save this as texture or I don't know, base, your choice. I usually go with base, so then I know that that's like the actual texture that I use. Right, so then you press save. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna export is the hats. Because the hats are pretty difficult to export, like one by one, I recommend exporting them all like together. It just depends where they're located. So let's say they're located around the head. If they're located around the head, then you're just gonna group them up like this. Then you're gonna right click, export selection. It's fine if it says OBJ, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so we're just gonna save it as hats, because that's usually what I save the name. So I press save. And then we're gonna save the backpack, because that's also really important. Okay, so we're gonna right click, export selection, and put backpack. We save it. We go into Blender, all right? The rig I use is kind of outdated, but it works fine with me. Like I'm really used to using this rig, modeling, posing, and importing and exporting. So this rig, I'm pretty sure is a 2.6 edition. If it's not, then I'll, I'll, I'm gonna link it down below. Okay, so every rig is different. Over here, you're always gonna click on the head. The head is really important because that's where you're gonna apply the textures. You're gonna zoom in, I'm going to go over here to sparkton21texture.png is exactly what we want. You're going to click on the little folder tab. You're going to locate the texture that you just saved. So you're going to go here, here, and then usually there's going to be a lot of different ones. It's just pick and guess. So if it works the first time or if it doesn't, um, just keep clicking and trying out another texture. So it's number four for me could be different for you depending on the amount of models you have so now you can move this tab up we won't be needing that so now what what we're gonna do is go to file import and then wavefront always choose dot obj and not legacy legacy is weird so always use wavefront obj we're gonna go to downloads blender stuff we're gonna click on the hats it may not seem like it is imported if you turn your camera, it's right here. Okay, so we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to set origin, and then geometry to origin. This will basically auto center it to where it needs to be. So now you press G for grab, Z for Z axis. The axes are Z key, which is up and down, X key for left and right, and then Y key for forward and backward. We're just gonna go with Z right now. Okay, so it looks off centered right now. So we could just center it. All right, there we go, looks good. Now we have to import the backpack. But before we do that, we're gonna group the head with a hat. So then, cause right now, if you move this, it's not grouped. It will move the hat with the head. So what we're gonna do is click on the hats and you press control and then head, which will just select those two. So hats. Uh, control, and then head, control P, and object. Do not put anything else, just object. It'll say make parent, but that's fine. So now, if you move around, it's gonna stick, which is, the, that's what we need. So you go to file, you go to import, wavefront, and then we're gonna go into backpack, right? We import that, again, 
it won't spawn where it needs to be. It's always going to spawn weirdly for some reason. If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. So we're going to right click set geometry. I mean, set origin and then geometry to origin. So now we can G and then Z. And then we just align it. Okay, there we go. Should be good. So now this one's different because it's a torso. What we're gonna do is click on the bag and then control and click on the torso attachments. And then control, P, and then object. That groups it. So now we have it all grouped together. We're ready to start posing. You're gonna click on the rig Go down over here where it says object mode and press pose mode. What we're going to do now is pose the character. So now what we're going to do is click on one part of the rig. Let's say the leg. Press G. So now you can like move it around and whatever. Press Z to push it up. And then press G and then Y. So then you move it forward. You can then press R and rotate it to the side. R is rotation, G is grabbing, and then S is scaling. G and then Z, G and then Y. You can like mess around with it. Looks a little funky. We'll solve it with the torso. When you're posing a character, you have to think about the weight distribution of the character. It is very important to make it look like a natural pose. Okay, this looks weird, but trust me, we can fix that. Let's. Okay, so we're gonna press rotate, rotate X, put that back, rotate X, that forward, rotate X, boom. So now it looks like he's walking, except this back foot, we're gonna pull it a little back. Okay, and then animation is like a lot more difficult because you have to do keyframes. So we're going to go from pose mode over to object mode. And then what we're going to do next, this is a little crazy. But what we're going to do is press shift and then A. Go into light. And then sun. I know it doesn't seem like there's anything like lighting. So what we're going to do is go into our camera settings. Go into the render engine and click Eevee for now. So now we can press, we're going to click on the light, we're going to move it up, and then Z. This is to like quickly go into like a render setting. So there's solid, there's wireframe, material preview, which is what we're usually on, and then there's rendered. So rendered is what we need. What we're going to do is press on this little yellow ball and make it focused on our character. There we go, now we have lighting. So this looks pretty boring, we're gonna add another lighting. So we're gonna go into area. This is what I usually use. Many people use different stuff, but what we're gonna do is move it over here. So as you can see, it's flat. It's not what we want. All right, so what we're gonna do is press R, which is rotate, and then X, and then, pre and then start typing in 90. That will move it at a certain angle, at a 90 degree angle. So what we're going to do next is R, Z, 90. There you go. The next thing we're going to do is press S. And we're going to scale it up. This will give it a nice effect. Alright, so now what we're going to do is go into the lighting setting. This is called data. We're going to increase this all the way up. It may look off. We're just going to play around with the zeros. And then you can change the color to whatever you want. I usually go from nice. Nice yellow. Yellow and orange give it a nice like sunset vibe. Just go with the yellow. Alright, what we're going to do next is shift and then D. As you can see, you have created another one. That's the duplication key. So we're just going to press X. Move it over here. Rotate, Z, 90, no, 180, 
There you go. Now you got two point lighting. Let's just make it a nice reddish. Give it that nice little contrast. And boom, you got lighting. One of the last things we're going to do is add a camera. So you press Shift A and go here to camera. Then you're going to go to your number pa numpad and press zero. This will automatically put you into the camera. So now you're going to move the camera over to wherever you want. You're going to move the camera to a nice angle. So let's say right down here. You can give it, you can make a really cool movie scene with this. And then you're going to click on the edge right here and press ro like R. So then you can rotate the camera. You can move it upside down. You can move it side to side. What we're going to do next is go over here to the render properties. We're going to check these certain things. Bloom, motion blur. You go into film and then transparent. This will make the background transparent. So if you're saving this as a render, this will definitely help you. Then you're going to go to the render engine, which is Eevee. We're going to change that to cycles. You can still render it as Eevee. It just won't look as good with the lighting. So we're going to go into cycles. Yes, it'll pixelate. Yes, if you move around, it'll lag. But that's what we need. Last thing you're going to do is go up here to the render. Render image. And then you just wait. So I finished rendering. The next thing we're going to do is press image, save as, and then press just a folder that you made, and then you can just name the file. So I usually name it, I don't know, the username. All right, then you just press save as image, and boom, you're done.